Chapter 12 Tommy blamed Wilbur for all his problems, which for once was accurate, since it was Wilbur's fault for him returning home freezing his ass off with a scratch on his leg. Who the fuck forced a tired and emotionally burnt-out child to jump over a massive garden fence at five o'clock in the morning? A selfish dickhead, that's who. And yes, Tommy only called himself a child when it expedited pity points. Stop hitting me, you're the one who can't jump properly. Wilbur grumbled as Tommy whacked his shoulder for the sixteenth time. Die. You need to be more creative with your death threats, Wilbur said. Try visiting TikTok comment sections. I will murder you and bury you with only one sock on. That's not the creativity I was looking for. Wilbur opened the glass door connected to the living room. It was suspicious how the door was unlocked, but the major red flag was Techno sitting on the sofa, reading a book in pure darkness, with Phil asleep next to him. How the fuck are you reading that? Tommy blurted out. I've memorized this book, so I know when to change the page. Techno replied, his eyes still glued onto the book in his hands. Tommy was more concerned over how the book Techno chose to memorize was The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Techno closed the book and drew their attention to Phil. Who's going to take the blame? Both Tommy and Wilbur pointed at each other and said, at the same time, Not me. Not me. You taking the blame is the first step for you making it up to me, Tommy declared, grinning as Wilbur pouted at him. Dad is going to beat me to death. Then you won't have to be in debt to me anymore. In debt? Techno asked. He emotionally scarred me, these are the consequences. Tommy explained, and patted Wilbur on the back, annoying the man further. Huh? Don't hat me, dipshit. You're in debt to me as well. You ditched our weekly fencing. Techno, at least, had the decency to look guilty about it. I want an apology. And not another Greek mythology children's book. What about the adult version? Techno huffed as Tommy narrowed his eyes at him. All right, sorry. We can go fencing later after you sleep. Good enough. Now that you guys are back, I'm going to bed. Good luck dealing with Phil, Wilbur. Techno picked up his book and left the living room. Wilbur hadn't moved a muscle. His gaze stuck on Phil. I'm sleeping in your room tonight, Wilbur said. Nope, I've had enough Wilbur craft for the rest of my life after today. I will wake up dead. Wilbur grabbed Tommy's shoulder and shook them as he spoke. Dad is going to skin me alive. No therapy needed for you then, Tommy shrugged, unbothered as Wilbur continued to shake him. Good night. Wilbur groaned and flicked Tommy on the forehead then ran up the stairs as fast as he could, scared of the repercussions of his actions like a fucking pussy. Yawning, Tommy looked around at the dark living room and turned off the muted TV. He gripped the blanket around his waist and draped it over Phil. Techno? Phil said, groggily, waking up from his sleep. Tommy tensed. Oh, you're home safe. Yeah, we're back. We're okay. The man's eyes began to shut again. Tommy finished tucking the blanket over him. Good. It didn't take long for Phil's breathing to even out. Tommy watched him for a moment, a softness crawling throughout him. He felt guilty for worrying the man to the point where he tried to stay awake downstairs, hoping for Wilbur and him to return. But... Tommy was still kind of pissed at him. Still, though, Phil cared about him. Waking up at two o'clock in the afternoon was an acceptable time after having to chill in a graveyard until the aesthetic vibes were ruined by the sun rising. Those were Wilbur's words, not Tommy's. If sitting on a bench in front of your deceased mother's gravestone was an aesthetic, then he did not want to see Wilbur's Pinterest boards. Cake for breakfast, or brunch, was acceptable as well. No conditions applied. 
The look of disgust Phil gave him as he worked from the second Tory kitchen table meant nothing to Tommy. He also ignored the exasperation Phil had as he sat with his plate of chocolate cake opposite him on the table that you weren't supposed to eat on. He had a couple of aims for how his brunch was going to go. Firstly, he wanted to annoy the living hell out of Phil's of Minecraft. That was easy. Secondly, he wanted an apology. And lastly, Tommy wanted to cheer the man up. You get no say in where I eat after how you treated me this entire week. Tommy said, digging his spoon into the cake. It was Wilbur's cake, but communism existed for a reason. I get that this week and even now is hard for you, but you could have just told me instead of making me think that I was the problem. Phil closed the lid of his laptop. You're right, I should have. And I shouldn't have been distant with you either. You could have still been distant, Phil. Tommy waved his spoon around to emphasize his point. If that's how you get through that, go for it. But next time, tell me beforehand. No, you don't deserve everyone ignoring you just because we're going through something, Tommy. Phil's kind eyes sharpened with solemnity. I'm sorry for putting you through that. Tommy shoveled another piece of cake into his mouth. As much as he aimed for an apology, it still made him uncomfortable. When's our next Tesco's visit? I have more things to blackmail you with now. You are the devil reincarnated. I mean, I could be. Tommy didn't know if there was a devil in Greek mythology. His first thought was Hades, but he was more the keeper of the dead, and Thanatos was the personification of death. But he did read one Korra post that argued how Prometheus, the titan who pissed off Zeus and gave fire to humanity, was like Lucifer, with how they both rebelled against their god and tried to bring knowledge to humans. Hmm, nah, he wasn't Prometheus. Though the whole rebelling against gods did sound like him. He resonated with the phrase that you should live a life that would get you burnt at the stake during medieval times which he was experienced with. Transylvania wasn't nice to Icarus. Is Wilbur dead? Tommy asked, suddenly remembering the fear Wilbur felt earlier today. Wilbur is, unfortunately, alive, Phil replied. He agreed to take the punishment for the both of you, after moving ten years off my life expectancy due to stress. Ten less years having to deal with Wilbur and Techno. Tommy rebutted. Sounds like a dream. Phil chuckled under his breath, but then his expression hardened. If you pull this shit again, though, there will be no loopholes. Understandable. I can't wait to figure out what belts is like. Oh, my fucking... Phil facepalmed and rubbed at his eyes as if it was too early in the morning to deal with this, despite how it was the afternoon. Stop listening to Wilbur. I don't belt kids. Tommy laughed and shrugged at him as he got up from the table with his empty plate. It surprised him how much he missed conversations with Phil like this, where it ended with either Phil cussing him out or laughing with him. He was glad that insinuating that Phil belted children made the man feel better. Anything to stop him from distancing himself again. His brunch mission was successful. So now it was on to the plan he had with Techno. He didn't quite know how this week affected Techno. It must have upset him if he wanted to be alone whilst fencing. Tommy fetched his school bag from his room before he knocked on Techno's bedroom door. It was time to amuse and annoy the anime man. You aren't even changed. Was what Techno said as he opened the door, already dressed in his sports gear. That's because you're helping me proofread my history coursework before we go. Tommy answered, shoving his papers into Techno's hands. And why would I do that? You underestimate the power of guilt tripping. Techno rolled his eyes and put on his glasses. He began to read it, though stopped after a minute. Did you give me the right thing to read? Yeah, why? Your introduction starts with you talking shit about your history teacher. Tommy grinned. Slandering Miss Allingham was just something that came so easily to him. 
She said the coarse look had to come from the heart. This is my heart. You called her a Disney adult when summarizing your argument about what factor was most significant in causing the Little Man Bird Revolution. Techno said, his voice stoic, though there was an inkling of an amused smile on his lips. He continued reading, his smile becoming more prominent as he did so. I don't think it's appropriate to say King George was Uckers and deserved to die in a paragraph that's supposed to argue about the corruption of the S&P monarchy. Techno said, crossing the words out on the paper with a red pen. Am I wrong, though? Techno rolled his eyes again. Tommy, you can't include hashtags in your essay. Why not? You even put them in your references. Tommy didn't really care about history, and he held a grudge against the teacher, so why would he be formal and professional in any written work? His plan seemed to be successful, though, as Techno looked both entertained and disgusted at his work. Do you at least agree with my conclusion? Tommy asked. Actually, yes, Techno said. The question is, as you said, dumb, biased, stupid, and dumb again. The structure in your teacher made you do is weird as well. Technoblade, be my history teacher. No. Techno handed him his coursework back, his mood lighter than before. Get changed, we're leaving in five minutes. When they arrived at the fencing building, and the training started, it seemed like the guilt Techno felt earlier for ignoring Tommy throughout the week went away. It was obvious due to how Techno was absolutely destroying the fuck out of Tommy, and littering his body with bruises. Not only was his ego wounded, but everything else Techno could technically reach was as well. This is rigged. I am at a disadvantage. Tommy fumed as he rubbed the aches on his chest. Then do better, Techno said, smug. Russ interrupted Tommy's train of thought, which was just many, many insults about Techno, by counting them in again. Within seconds, Techno flung himself over the center line and sliced his blade across Tommy's already bruised shoulder before his feet touched the floor. I swear to fucking... A minute break, Russ announced over Tommy's complaining. It took everything in Tommy to not strangle the bitch to the floor as Techno dared to look proud of himself. He sighed and contained his anger. You know any therapists around here? Tommy asked, not knowing what else to say during their break. That is not the conversation starter I was expecting. I got Wilbur to agree to therapy if I do it as well. He further explained. Techno scowled at him. How? I have my ways. Techno hit him with his saber shrugging off the penalty Russ gave him for attacking during a break. Fine, I have my problems, he has his. We've agreed to both try to deal with them via therapy. He told you, didn't he? Tommy frowned. About his mother. Yeah. Techno walked forward, and Tommy kept his eyes on the blade in the other's hand. Don't break his trust. Techno muttered it sounding like a threat. He bit on his lip and continued, and don't let him break yours either. He saluted. Yes, sir. Stop giving me more reason to stab you. Tommy gasped at him. Break's over, Russ said. Techno immediately aimed for Tommy's throat. So the reasonable and highly illegal move Tommy chose to make was to tackle the man to the ground. Cora Cor, penalty! Russ called, glaring at Tommy. Ross, he threatened me! Tommy shouted, sitting on Techno's legs so the man couldn't get up. You still can't touch him. Tommy groaned and hoisted himself up, leaving a disgruntled Techno still on the floor. Get up, pussy. You are the sole reason why children deserve less. Techno grumbled. After being humiliated by the same man whose name printed on their birth certificate was literally Technoblade, Tommy decided to bother Nikki more. She had sent him her work schedule, and he abused this as much as he could, 
especially when she was the one closing the cafe. You've been staring at your phone like it personally offended you for half an hour, Nikki said as she placed plates in the dishwasher. Because it has, Tommy shouted, attempting to throw his phone into the freezer and leave it there. Why is therapy so expensive? Let me guess, you're on the Las Nevadas website. Tommy exited the site, glaring at it. Yeah. That therapy industry specializes in dealing with addiction. It's a rehab center, so it's going to be expensive. Nikki explained. Wait, how do you know that? I tried to sign Tubbo up to it when I was 15 because he was annoying me. Did it work? Tommy asked, and Nikki gave him a look. You know, you could just tell me when I ask a stupid question instead of judging me. Where's the fun in that? She laughed as Tommy flipped her off. Nikki closed the dishwasher and turned on one of the sink taps to wash the rest of the cutlery. She let out a shriek as boiling water burned her right hand. Tommy jumped from the counter and grabbed a cloth. He turned on the cold water and held her right wrist under it, trying to ease her burn. Are you that incompetent? He joked. I get the hot and cold tabs mixed up. Nikki defended, whilst laughing at her own stupidity. Minutes passed, and the redness on her hand seemed to simmer. Tommy went to let go of her, but the black ink smeared on her inner wrist caught his attention. He rubbed at it with the cloth before Nikki reared her hand back. Even with Nikki attempting to cover her arm, Tommy could recognize the mark of Zagreus from anywhere, seeing as the same tattoo burned his wrist too. Nikki? He gaped at her, a plethora of emotions flowing through him, ranging from amazement to relief. You're... You're like me. He wasn't lying. Holy shit, he wasn't lying? Tommy... Nikki didn't share his elation. I'm not alone. You're... He smiled. He had someone like him. Someone who understood the pain of reincarnation and built up frustration at having no free will over the events of your life. How many lives have you lived? Tommy. Nikki's clipped tone caught him off guard. She looked up at him, unease practically flying off her. Do you not remember me? He stared at her with startled eyes, confused. He tried to remember every face from every life, though they were all mushed together over time. She untucked her necklace from under her collar, and the blood drained from Tommy's face. The same charms his brother had crafted everyone before their declaration of independence hung around Nikki's neck, their token of togetherness and brotherhood. Neichu. The scars of Theseus across his back flared as he pushed himself away from her. He could almost picture a younger version of her, the girl he loved like a big sister, who sewed patches onto the rips of his uniform and bandaged his wounds. Too bad her concern over his health had died by the time he actually needed it, when cuts from enemy swords meant nothing compared to the damage Dream did to him. You abandoned me. Tommy whispered, his throat constricted. You, you let me die in exile. Loneliness followed him in every life, but he could never forget its origin. Her betrayal hadn't hurt as much as the others did, partly because by the time it hit, he was counting down the days for everyone to follow in his brother's footsteps, to leave him. Nikki's face furrowed with pain. I was mourning your brother. So was I. He cried out, voice harsh. So was I. You abandoned me too. You all did. Nikki tugged on her necklace. And my myth practically confirmed it. He swallowed down his objection. I was Calypso. 
every person I fell in love with ended up leaving me, just because I decided to follow you and your brother over the king. My own family begged me not to join the revolution, but I did anyway. Though through war and death, you both left me. She scoffed, tears present in her eyes as Tommy sank deeper against the wall. I wasn't your priority. I was nothing. The last time I saw you, you were shouting at me during my trial, siding with them to punish me even if it meant exile. He bit back, anger gritting at his teeth. I was manipulated, tortured and killed, and you just let that happen. Nicky winced at the fight in his voice. He had longed for confrontation ever since his first death, and she unlocked a part of himself that he had buried as he was certain he could never achieve it. She knew what happened after his exile. She knew what happened to his father, how the wars ended. Who else is cursed? He demanded, his head pounding. His entire world had flipped in a matter of minutes. Unanswered questions at the root of all his problems. He thought he was alone, but now he wasn't. Yet the only person who understood what it was like to be cursed was her. Someone he thought was his friend. Two times now, in different lives. I only know of those who were with me while I waited to be reborn. Tommy paused. His mouth dried as her words registered. You had other people in your void? Nikki hesitated to nod. Who? He asked, more aggressive than the last. Who was with you? Tommy. Who the fuck was with you? Your brother stayed the longest. Nikki whimpered, as if it hurt her throat to say. Tommy, were, were you alone all that time? Tommy flinched back, the black emptiness that accompanied his dreams swallowing him whole. Nikki had his brother in her void. Would it even be a void for her? She wasn't trapped in years of solitude, she had him. And that was all Tommy ever desired. What about Dream? He asked, more frantic. Was he there? Who's Dream? His breath hitched. She wasn't haunted by a masked man who laughed at the pain he caused and whispered comfort when it all got too much. She didn't know the torture of being forced to converse with the very same god who ripped and ruined your youth, the one responsible for every scar on his body and mind. Look, Tommy, I'm... I need to go. He said, out of breath. He ran out of the building, the cold air suffocating his lungs as the thousands of realizations came upon him. He sat on his bed, and traced over his brother's handwriting in his notebook, with the sickness worsening in his stomach. Nicky, someone he called a friend, knew who he was this entire time and didn't tell him. She didn't even know who Dream was. On top of it all, she was over sixteen. So, she had guessed her myth correctly already. Nicky was free not burdened by the guilt that wormed into Tommy's heart after he wasted another day without getting closer to knowing who his myth was. Jealousy stopped him from being able to sleep. Someone with the same curse had a happy ending. But where did that leave him? Alone, scarred, and fucked up. He didn't have a family, a purpose in life, or confidence in himself. His tattoo burned meaning that Dream knew a visit was inevitable. Yet every time he closed his eyes, the same brown shade of his brothers stared back at him. He never said goodbye to his brother, or even got an explanation for why he'd changed ever since their first banishment to Pogtopia. The unknown reasons as to why his big brother, who once comforted him when he had nightmares, became the man who caused them. Tears pricked in his eyes out of frustration. He rushed downstairs into the kitchen, 
ignoring Techno and Phil, who were watching the TV. His hands shook as he reached into the highest cabinet and retrieved a box. He held the pharmaceutical box with Wilbur's name on it and bit his inner cheek. Amitriptyline was also a medication for insomnia, and Tommy couldn't die from an overdose. It was still a stupid idea, though. But he needed to sleep. He needed answers that only Dream could give. Tommy, you all right in there? Phil called from the living room. He opened the box and stuffed a strip of the tablets into his pocket. Yeah, I just needed a drink, he said back, hoping that the quiver in his voice wasn't obvious. He put the box back into the cabinet and got a water bottle from the fridge. He muttered a good night to the two and walked back upstairs, the weight in his pocket fueling the anxiety clawing at his chest. His tattoo pricked at his skin, almost warning him not to. But he never did listen to Dream's advice. Before he could convince himself not to, he unwrapped the tablets and swallowed them dry. The four empty vessels in the strip glared back at him. He probably should have researched the maximum dose for amitriptyline before shoving 200 milligrams of it down his throat. His curse didn't make him immune to side effects. Tommy laid on his back, burrowing himself under his covers and clinging onto Henry. The hat Nikki had knitted for him was still on Henry's head. Why would she do that? Why would she go along with being his friend, even as far as to give him a Christmas present, if he had abandoned her, too? It wasn't his intention to isolate himself from those he loved during the peace periods between the wars, Nikki included. But having your brother be brutally murdered by your father and Tobias caring more about saving an already dead nation over his own best friend ruined the idea of love for Tommy. He raised his arm to rub at his eyes, only for him not to feel the contact. He tried to sit up, but his body weighed him back down. His skin tingled, drowsiness overwhelming him as his eyes kept fluttering shut. Tommy pried his eyes open, yet he wasn't in his bedroom anymore. Gray walls adorned with red vines surrounded him. He was in the maze again, in the void. Fed up with playing into any more of Dream's games, he ran forward, holding onto the walls as he navigated himself through. Dream! He yelled. His limbs dragged him down as he reached another dead end. Dream, you fucking coward, come out! He shouted until his throat was hoarse. Dream appeared in front of him, drops of blood stained against his mask and green cloak. You have questions I can't answer, Tommy. Dream said, his mouth thinned into a line. Tommy threw his fist forward but it phased straight through the god and smashed against the maze wall. He held his hand to his chest. Why the fuck didn't you tell me my brother and Nikki are cursed? Dream didn't entertain his questions. You fucking bitch. I was alone all this time when I could have been with them. He rested against the wall, his body defeated. Why am I different? Dream stepped forward and towered over him. You're special. His mask glistened. How? He spat, anger seething on his tongue. You're special to me. Tommy tried to hit him, and his knuckles scratched against the wall, bleeding gold instead of red. Stop hurting yourself, Dream ordered. Tommy did it again, over and over, until he collapsed onto the cold floor. Tommy sniffed, the exhaustion and pain catching up to him. How do I know you're even real? His bleary eyes tried to remain open. Neachu didn't know who you were. I'm real, Tommy. Dream's hand cupped his cheek, the gentle grip conflicting him. 
I'll tell you more in time. I don't have time! Dream's hold on him tightened, his fingers grazing past his chin as Tommy's eyes closed. Then pay attention. The touch disappeared, and Tommy's back resigned against the wall. He didn't need to open his eyes to know Dream had left him in the void. Alone again. <laughs>